of the series of the PYP Traveler. Uh, make sure you subscribe and you follow the series just in case you want uh, to learn more about the PYP. Uh, and today we are going to be learning more about introduction of the unit. So there are many ways to introduce a unit of inquiry inside the classroom. So as we have mentioned in another video, there are six units of inquiry in the PYP, uh, which fall under the transdisciplinary themes that we have already um, referred. Um, so when we introduce the unit of inquiry, uh, we, have to, um, we have to share the central idea with the students. So the way that we are doing it, it's not, you know, like only, okay, so this is the central idea that said, okay, let's go, let's do the inquiry. No, it doesn't work this way. We have to check the prior knowledge of the students based on what we're going to inquire. And this can be done in multiple ways. Um, you can introduce the central idea uh, in a word search, like in a scrambled word search. So let's say you have the central idea printed, uh, printed in papers and you cut them and you scramble the words and then the students will have to work in teams in order to put the words together in the proper order. Uh, you can also make a competition and they can uh, earn points or they can earn new rewards it's up to you uh, and the system that you apply in your classroom. So this is a very fun way uh, to introduce a central idea and then you can start your brainstorm discussion. Another way is to uh, refer to the main objective of the central idea. So for example, if you're having a unit of inquiry based on uh, migration, let's say, uh, you will take the word migration, you will write it on the whiteboard then you can have a brainstorm discussion with the students and see uh, and create a mind map of ideas that are connected to migration. And uh, once you form an idea of, okay, so uh, migration is connected to traveling, it's connected to purposes for a better life, uh, you know, you can find some uh, similarities of migration of people and animals. Then you can focus what reasons uh, do animals and people have to migrate and so forth. So when you have completed your mind map, then you can introduce a central idea and you can see how students react, like which words do they understand, which words they don't. Uh, from that point onwards, you introduce the unit and uh, you move forward with your tuning in stage of the inquiry cycle. Well, this is a little bit of a tricky situation because it depends on the school uh, and uh, what your curriculum coordinator sets as, let's say, a protocol that you use in your program. Um, if you use the six steps of uh, the inquiry cycle, then that means that uh, you're following, tuning in like the inquiry cycle of Kat Murdoch, which is tuning in, finding out, sorting out, going further, um, reflecting and taking action. Uh, this was referred to the making the PYP happen, which still is valid and you can use, of course. Or if you are following the enhanced PYP planner, then you can uh, build the uh, if you can build the activities based on agency and based on ownership and voice of students, which is the co-collaboration of students and teachers together. And of course, you are building the unit together. And this is uh, what you have to do, by the way, when it comes to the Enhanced PYP Planner. Another thing is that maybe your school has adopted their own inquiry cycle. Uh, and then you change the vocabulary that you're using, which also is an option and it can be done as well. And you can, you can base your whole unit uh, on that. Um, you will see the preferences of the students, you will see the, what they want to know about that central idea. And of course, this is the best time to introduce the first line of inquiry. 
because this will be your first directory of the unit and then um, it, it will set the foundation for the embarking of your uh, inquiry. You start researching about what students already know. So if, for example, again, migration is the topic of your, of your uh, unit, of the central idea, then you will search for the first line of inquiry. What does the central inquiry say? Let's say, for example, a uh, line of inquiry could be uh, animals migrate for survival, let's say. So this could be uh, a line of inquiry. So you will see how uh, animals migrate, which animals migrate, where do they migrate, um, why they migrate, how long does it take, uh, what are the consequences of this migration. So depending on the concept, on the key concept that you will be inquiring in that unit, you will be asking those kind of questions and you will be finding information. How you will find information? Well, internet of course is your, you know, like vital uh, source of information. But it's not only that, you can also have interviews uh, with other teachers in your school. You can set some interviews with parents as well uh, by uh, putting students in the place of the interviewer to, the, to their parents. Uh, they can also um, create questionnaires and, uh, and send, like, share them with their peers or with students of other classes in the school. Uh, and they can collect those, uh, this data and you can also have your math integration here if you're working on uh, data handling. And you can build your, uh, your bar graphs, you can, do your, you can create your um, uh, tally charts and you can also move forward with mean, mode, median, and range. So the possibilities are limitless and they are abundant. So it's up to you and your students uh, that where you will channel the whole inquiry. When you are, um, when you are introducing the unit, you can also check uh, what integrations you can have in that unit. Of course, the central idea will actually define the integrations that you will be having during that unit. The could be connected with writing and you can have an extended uh, dedication and integration uh, of writing in that unit. So you can do some narrative writing, you can do some fiction and non-fiction writing, uh, you can use some resources uh, of uh, Julius Verne for example, uh, to be inspired and to inspire your students to create their own fiction stories, limitless options. It's up to you where you want to channel and the students uh, the inquiry. So that was it guys. I hope it helped uh, and uh, you got a, a new approach on how to introduce a unit of inquiry to your students. Stay tuned uh, for more as we will be discussing more about um, ideas on formative assessment, formative assessment tools, and how we can uh, implement them in the class uh, using uh, resources from the school. Uh, subscribe and follow the series because the series will never end.